the town manager proposing to you and you agreeing with the idea of restructuring how town ser the town services in this building were paid for so as to migrate the financial functions from the treasurer's office to the town manager's office. Um, as, uh, as reported, uh, I don't necessarily assume the Commons is the paper of record for this board, but um, as reported in the Commons, the town manager, quote, came up with a solution. That was uh, in a description of your May, I think May 22nd, well, there was a May 22nd memo that was circulated at the last meeting by your present town manager, but the, um, I think it may have been the May 10th meeting. But the problem again with that is that there's no public process with it. When your town manager says change how another elected official does their job, that's something that, that the town ought to decide, not the town manager. Um, the, the solution was basically to gut the treasurer's position, to, to leave it as little more than a figurehead. The question that I had as I read through all of this and read sort of the, read the history, the background of the financial difficulties, the problems that the, the treasurer's office had had, was it seemed to me that what the treasurer really needed was some resources. Um, rather than being gutted, um, the treasurer's office could have used some help both on the computer end and just plain the, uh, as, as outlined in the materials distributed by Chip at the last meeting, the, the remarkable volume of tasks that are assigned to the treasurer were, well, were assigned to the treasurer's um, responsibilities. Um, uh, whatever happened, that May 22nd memo, lengthy letter from the former town manager and another memo to Denise from the former town manager are, are pretty telling in how things, the point to which things had gotten by then. Um, Cynthia speaks of being frustrated and impatient with, with having, with Denise's attempts to learn the job. Um, she ultimately, she concludes that letter by saying that, and the letter is addressed to you, by saying that basically she's not going to spend any more of her time trying to teach Denise the finances of the town unless directed by you to do so, which clearly did not happen. So, and she follows that up by shutting Denise out of the computer system. Um, now, admittedly, she then sends Denise a memo, which also was in that packet, saying, giving her a password, but a password that only provided limited access. If you read the memo, it didn't give Denise access to the town's finances. What it gave her access to was the reports that, did, that Cynthia had prepared. So right there, again, the very thing that Denise had been asking for, which is access to enough detail to be able to understand how the conclusions are reached, and she's being told, well, you can look at the conclusions, but you can't look at the detail. And in fact, there's a phrase in there that really struck me because Denise has said it to me repeatedly that it, it struck her as highly inappropriate. And I was surprised to see Cynthia actually use the phrase, same phrase in her own memo, need to know. It's that, that Denise's access should be on a need-to-know basis. Well, it's hard for me to imagine how an elected town treasurer doesn't have a need-to-know anything she wants to know about the town finances. But 
Cynthia told you she was throwing up walls, and she said unless you told her not to, she wasn't going to back down, and you didn't tell her not to, which really turns the gets to the rest the other part of the question here. I was asked at the last meeting if, with the change of personnel, with a different town manager, Denise wouldn't be comfortable coming back to this job, and. I've, I've raised that with her a number of times over the last few months. She has, n has not expressed a willingness to do that. And the reason she has been unwilling is because of you. She does not believe that the select board in any way, shape, or form supports her. And Cynthia's memo and your actions seem to bear her out. Um, you know, at, at the last meeting, when I advocated for Denise's perspective on this, um, and, and pretty much every time I characterize things the way Denise sees them, Mr. Laughlin told me I was misstating, that it was a misstatement. And then, it, and then he would take what he understood to be Cynthia's perspective and present it, and he would say that was the truth. He presented the truth, I presented misstatements. I persisted in presenting misstatements. That's, and in fact, I will continue to advocate for Denise. When I became sufficiently persistent, he told me I was obnoxious. I got a question whether any negotiation, any discussion of the roles of town officials should come down to that. But think, think about that, that presented, that the mere presentation of a, of a different perspective, a perspective that's in fact somewhat borne out by that May 22 letter to you from the town manager, that that's obnoxious? No, what it is is a different perspective. And if you won't appreciate that other people have different perspectives, you can't really negotiate with them. All of which is to say that I, I think it's pretty unlikely based on what I've read and, and frankly a number of discussions I've had with a number of people around town hall that we can get to a point where Denise would feel that she has this board's support in doing her job, because clearly she does not. And since you guys assert the power to manipulate that based on how much money you're willing to put on which line item, what resources you're willing to make available to her, she considers the job to be untenable, and frankly, I'd have to agree with her. Until such point as we can all sit down together and decide that we're, that all of the elected officials of the town are entitled to the respect of their offices, I don't see how we come to a, come to a negotiated solution. But that's my pitch. I'm still waiting for any response that is anything other than do it how we say to do it or resign. That's consistently for seven months the only message I've gotten back. And if that's your position, that it's your way or the highway, I don't see how we come to a resolution of this issue. Thank you. Comment from the public? Commentary from the public comments? Can I just ask a couple of questions? Sure. Um, you said that. Uh, you might want to identify yourself. I, I'm Laura Chapman. I'm sorry. Um, you said that there was a quote in here about a need to know basis. Can you point that out to me? I can't find it. And what you're referring to? To the memo, the May 22nd memo. The May 22nd. Yeah. That, that includes that memo includes the letter from Cynthia to the board. Yes. Also a response from the DCLD mm -hmm. and various town officials in a number of Vermont towns yes. pursued the same course that Cynthia was, or similar 
arrangements. So I do see a quote about her not understanding why um, Denise would need to know something, but I don't see her saying anything that excludes her on a need to know basis. I see kind of a question as to like, she doesn't understand why she felt she needed to know this. Um, and, and then goes on to say that because of that, she's not going to continue to provide information to Denise. Well, that, um, I just do not have to, the time to spend showing her every minutiae detail, which by which I think she has minute detail. Mm -hmm. um, there you go. I mean, she's just not going to give her the information. And goes on on the last page to say to the board flat out, you know, unless I am directed to do otherwise, that's how I'm going to respond. Okay, thank you for answering that. No, No, that was my only question. I was curious where that came from. It's all alternative. Alita, anything you want to add to this? Well, as I've said in the past, Denise wanted to know how the payroll, and she knew about accounts payable because she, she does that at Baskerville. But Newmark is a little bit different, and she wanted to learn and know how the things, the programs work. She didn't want to do the work. Laura had been doing all of that part of it, and she just got stonewalled all along. That's, uh, I guess that's not my understanding because uh, she was offered help by Laura and Laura showed her things and in fact she even, I just happened to come across an email <clears throat> uh, May 5th, or, I'm sorry, May 10th, um, which says we've already started the cash receipts program, Cynthia and Laura helped with that transition. I know there's a lot more to learn and I look forward to doing my best. Cash receipts and taxes. What's that? Cash receipts are mostly taxes. Yeah, but I mean, my impression was that she she was being given the opportunity to do this. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's a he said, she said kind of thing. And as uh, uh, Mr. Proctor said, I mean, it's it's a um, it's a perception. I mean, you're getting one perception, and we have another. I would suggest that sometime between May 10 and May 22nd when you see Ms. Stoddard obviously having reached a point of frustration, whatever Denise was asking of them in terms of access to the system and the information on how things had done had reached a point that they thought it was more than they were obligated to give, or at least more than Cynthia was obligated to give, that Denise was just being was just taking up too much of their time. Well, that's not the impression I got. It's the impression that Cynthia gives in her letter. Well, she, she says she, she doesn't have the time to keep doing this. Opinion, well, you're, you're kind of embellishing a bit yourself by saying on a need-to-know basis, which isn't actually written in there. Well, so in terms of your time, quote, I just do not have the time to spend showing her every minutiae detail. Close quote. That seems a fairly straightforward and honest response to. Well, it may well be, but that's the problem is that the, the what she's saying is she doesn't have the time to help a public official know how to do her job. 
Um, you know, she needed that information in order to know what was going behind the checks that she was being asked to sign. Um, and again, if, there were, if it was a resources issue, why is the response negative? Why is the response then, okay, then let's see what we can bring in here to help it work instead of, okay, then you're done. I don't know. I, as far as I know, she was offered to help. Right. I mean, I mean through, through the trainings and whatnot. I mean, she actually, you know, she went to trainings. Right, she did. On her own initiative, she went up to But she, anyone, anyone who's in the town can go to them. I mean, they're always advertised. Sure. But I, mean, I mean, it's <laughs> ultimately, and, you know, not to make it a black and white issue, but is, a, is the town manager responsible to explain the duties of an elected official to that elected official? Typically, no. I mean, I, I, again, I'm not trying to... The, the, the process... Cindy was making... You know, yeah, a no. good faith effort to assist Denise in understanding what was going on with the changes that were brought up for the treasurer position, or how we budgeted to pay for it. Yeah. That certainly is a part of it. Um, you know, and this has been obviously it's been frustrating for everyone, but you know we. Denise ceased contacting us in any meaningful way other than through your advocacy, which is obviously looking at Denise's point of view or your own point of view on governance issues, which, you know, ultimately this is going to be put in the hands of the voters to deal with this. So are you going to back the new person that comes in? We would, I, I, you know, I was thrilled when Denise came in. I was absolutely thrilled. I, I, again, right, exactly. I, I don't, you know, you're, you're putting us in a, in a position of somehow that we ceased supporting Denise, you know, who made it very difficult for us to offer her support. She did, she's stopped appearing, she left. And, you know, I mean, you know that there were tensions in that office between not merely Denise and Cynthia, but with, your, with yourself Cynthia. and Cynthia and Laura. I mean, you know, we're not in this office every day following these, you know, the courses of these disputes or disagreements but I think Cynthia made a you know very clear effort to explain clearly how this was going to work and offered her I mean I, I haven't seen anything from Denise saying here's what I wanted and was unable to get yeah you have access to the computer system Cynthia walked around the computer system that's so Fletcher, so I, I've actually had 22 years or more with Newark. She had password access. To reports only. Yes. That's what Cynthia's own memo says that. Okay. Is locked. that locked out? Yes. No. It that's doesn't not get locked out. Detail. Locked out would be you don't even have a password to get in. No. Okay, fine. Okay. So I can, I can walk into the vestibule, but I can't see what's in any of the rooms. Sure. Why? She's the public official with responsibility for those finances. Why can't she look at the numbers? And the I mean, numbers. When you say that she wasn't being, <laughs> that you know she wasn't being stonewalled, she absolutely was. And you guys were doing nothing to tell the town manager that was inappropriate. So I'm going to use simple analogies that the public understands. A 15-year-old gets a permit. And you set them in the car, and you say go. The person comes in to learn about accounting. And you say, here's full access to everything to do with payroll. And basic concepts aren't understood of what FICA and Medicare are. Two are very similar, except one actually has impact on financial and people. If the kid never starts a car, he hasn't done anything wrong. But if you allow access into areas in which a person is not comfortable or familiar with, 
you will forever find your audit saying, wait a minute, you allowed access and something changed and you didn't know about it? So there is a control mechanism. There is a control mechanism by which you step into learning. She's not a 15 year old. I she's she not, and she's, she is an elected official I with understand. the responsibility for those numbers in there. I understand. She has the legal responsibility for them. Do you think she's going to muck up her own number? Her concern is not that, you're, that there's something correct going on in there that she's going to mess up. It's that she doesn't even know what's going on in there. So you got a situation where you got the town, the people who have access to yes. the numbers are refusing to take the time to explain it to her, and she isn't allowed access to them on her own. How is she, as, and she is an elected official. She's not a 15 year old who wandered into the building. She And she's got some background on this. I'll bet you she does know what FICA and Medicare are. Good, you pick up on an example. So, Allowing access to every menu item. Okay, now uh, what are we looking at? Why all of a sudden, after all the years that Denise has been here and learned the jobs, yeah. okay, all of a sudden she's locked out of everything? I can't tell you what she had access to before. I don't even know what her password is. Oh, it's so. The, half the, I half the that, towns in the state have the same password number to begin with. Yeah, they do. All right. Some of them haven't changed it. That's, if you know what it is, try it first. So, but we each had passwords for our computer. Yes. And then all of a sudden, nobody can get into their computer unless you go in the front office and say, what's going on? Then she might give you a well, our computer, I guess, is a different story as well. Yeah, well. Logging onto a computer allows access to network information. Logging onto the network allows access to a module. Some right. module, some password. So, if access is restricted to reports, then there's a concern that you're going to go in and do something within employee, vendor maintenance, invoice maintenance, any other area for which at this point, we don't know that you know that. It's a safeguard. But I've already been doing these things. You no, have already saying. been doing them. Yes, you. Looking or whatever. Okay. Printing out reports. So all of a sudden. Oh, printing out reports. Okay. Yeah. But again, employee maintenance is the most sensitive thing to get anybody into. And if they're familiar with it, let them in. I guess the question is, I don't think that there was a familiarity or a recognition that that area was an area that Denise ever had access to? Did she? Yes, she did. And so then something and changed. Did. Then something changed. Yeah, it sure did. It did. Is there a reasonable explanation as to why that may have changed? Well, first thing you want to try to do is control so that data doesn't get changed. Default settings don't get changed. Is there a record of anything like that happening? No, I haven't seen any. In fact, I made a change and then failed to save it myself. So, but I, so under the cir circumstances we're running now, in the absence of the elected official, the uh, assistants that are sworn in act in their stead. Is that right? True statement. But I don't. I don't sign checks and let them go. I check through the bills oh, yeah. and the warrants. And Everything that led up to getting that check. Right. Yes. Which sounds like that's what Denise wanted to know. But so right now, if we continue to have failure of reporting, that is a function of the clerk and or treasurer. Failure of what? Failure of reporting. Which is what? which is remittal to the state of Vermont for animal licenses or marriage licenses that have time deadlines to be done. Is that a function of Denise, who's not here, or a function of Anita, who is the assistant working in her stead? It's probably between Barbara and myself. Okay. Seeing that Denise is not here. So it's a clerk? Right. It's not a clerk, it's a clerk. 
to that, yeah. But the clerk is, a, is the one who generates reports. The treasurer is the one who signs a check to make sure it gets paid. Right. So there's a reconciliation. I, but I only work one day a week. Yeah. Yes. To keep on top of everything. Or to try yeah, to. I should be doing. Yeah. So statutorily, Denise is not responsible for anything at this point. She's still the Oh yeah, she yes. is. But she's not here. She's on medical leave. We, management, administration, select board, have never formally been told by Denise or any doctor that she's on medical leave. Nothing. No record. We have no formal knowledge that there's a medical leave employee involved. We know an elected official has not been here. We've got nothing that states that there's a medical cause to not be here. Well, there is. I mean, but that, I mean, that's it. I have no idea why she wasn't here other than some of the things that you that you wrote about which is your impression from her but other than that she just disappeared your lawyer never told you anything no just a little bits and pieces between you but it was there was never anything about anything medical i mean she's on medical leave you're making it sound as if she's not here because of the issues with uh the treasurer so i'm not sure if it's the issues with the treasurer or if it's medical well, she had a nervous breakdown, in case you're interested. Well, well no one ever told me that. Well, she did. <laughs> well, so how am I supposed to make any kind of a judgment or decision if I have no idea? There, as, as, um, as Chip said, there's, there's no info. There's nothing. Other than some of the correspondences between the two of you, between you and uh, uh, our attorney which doesn't really shed a whole lot of light on anything. Mostly what that correspondence was attempting to do was to get some indication from this board that some concessions about the conditions of the job were going to be made. And it's been nothing. So this is a job action on the elected officials part? Do you want it to be? I mean, is, is that, I mean, I'm not going to return to work until I renegotiate. Or is it no, not? There's, there's no job for her to do when she's locked out of the computer system and, uh, and the conditions of employment have not been fit. What about the clerk position? Hmm? What about the clerk position? That's the job to be done. The conditions of employment have not been favorable of late. They haven't, excuse me. Favorable as of late. If she hasn't been here, how could they not have been favorable? Cute. They were not favorable when she left, and you guys haven't done a thing to change them. You keep asking us if you didn't get my letters. No, I got, no, we got them. Well, did you, did you get anything from them, that there was a problem? There was some problem, yes. Uh -huh. I didn't really know what it was, other than some of the problems with the treasurer. Some of the disputes there. And from what I understand, historically, a lot of that was being done just to help fix some of the problems within the treasurer's office and some of the fines that the town was being subjected to, which made a lot of sense to me. Well, and I don't know some of the historical stuff prior to my being here, so it's, it's a little bit more difficult for me to talk about that. But I mean, if, if there's a problem within the treasurer, um, and that perhaps that can be worked on, but. The perk? We still need a perk. I mean, I, I don't hear any issues about that. Well, I think there are. But maybe well, you think there are, but we haven't heard any issues about that. And like they say, I had no idea why she'd gone in the first place. So call an executive session. I'm sorry. Call an executive session. Don't recommend it. Yeah, for what purpose? And, and the an a town employee 
You do it all the time on, on other bases. You want to you want to discuss the conditions of employment of a town employee. So here, for Fletcher has recommended and done it in public. Yeah, I'm not sure what we're so you know we're going without, to without without the third board member here it doesn't make sense. Certainly. To to move so. forward in that direction today. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know some of this stuff, so, yep. Yeah. Anything else? I made no catch. Mm -hmm. no, thank you. I don't entirely understand your pitch. I'm sorry. What are you, what's the end game here? Uh, let's see what the board does. So at the bottom of your packets, you should find, you're actually going to see the comparative budget report, which is really items B and C combined. So like this, multiple columns. Yep. So 18 budget and year to date are the center columns you can see it from the top we are 50 percent through the year and in terms of our progress we know we have talked about the lines that, that are over manager salary being one mm -hmm. of them legal fees being another one uh, but in general we stand in decent stead, but we will end up uh, exceeding our budget capacities based upon staff changes that have gone on. We still are holding, if you will, but utilizing it in other areas, the $40,000 put in for recycling. Right. But how did that, that wasn't impacted with the fire? With the, with the yeah, yeah, we haven't moved any budget numbers yet. Oh, okay. We talked about, I, I brought it up a couple months ago about taking some of that 40,000 moving over to the on-call pay Great. to raise that number from, I think, 11.6 to be 22,000. Um, and at this point, we haven't done that, but that's where we knew we were going to get some of those resources. Okay. Um, other things that have happened in this fiscal year with the budget as it was done, um, we were supposed to have six highway dives, we have five. Mm -hmm. One of the highway guys was supposed to spend 10 hours a week doing building maintenance. None of that ever really happened. Um, we we uh, budgeted to buy a pickup truck, a mower, and a trailer. Uh, the board already authorized buying a trailer and uh, for the cost of cow and lawn care, I think. We shouldn't even consider at this point trying to do that in the spring to buy a lot more a pickup truck. Uh, because ultimately we still have five guys on highway, not six. Uh, Brian, I think, would like to see six in the budget for next year as a part-timer for 1,500 hours at 15 bucks an hour. So that's in next year's budget. So those are some of your major highlights. Um, the excavator, which is leased, was not in your next year budget until this printout. And so one of the pages that should be down here is the tax rates got modified. And the thing is you know what I'm talking about yeah. there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Looks like this. Yeah. Yeah. So there is the last line on the bottom is a revised estimated tax rate based upon the current grant list staying exactly the way it is. Um, which is not likely to be the case of uh, the tax rate going to 0 0.7355 of which this year was 7162. So, two cents. Mm -hmm. Okay. A reminder again that within the budgets presented are uh, highway garage furnace, highway two garage doors, 
three, three ton HVAC systems added to the fire station, which all are capital type items. But at this point, I plug them directly in as building improvements as opposed to capitalizing them. Within the budget for 19 that's presented, again, is the 550 series truck being replaced, the F550 that we have um, for $77,000. In the revenue stream, I budgeted the 77 coming in and then uh, the equipment purchase, the 77 going out. That budget technique is not the way you've done those in the past. Right. But it's within this, it's a net zero to the tax rate in the budget, but it shows our cash flow intentions. Um, also in this budget is uh, 40,000 direct capital highway for the over the rail mower to replace the over the rail system that's on the John Deere now, keeping the same tractor, just replacing the hydraulic over the rail motor. Um, see your interest, Scott, in that tax rate and comparisons. <laughs> yeah. Interesting information. Uh, so this year, um, with the eminent change coming again in March, um, my, if I was to sit down and try to project, I have no idea what's coming in for a new replacement for Karen. Mm -hmm. uh, and that right now I'm of the opinion that we could have in legal lines for many purposes um, the full time bookkeeper. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. But we are, you know, Just we are in a position to pull that trigger yet. Um, but I do have her coming in to do the W-2s, 1099s, and the quarterlies tomorrow, which is a normal way she doesn't work. But trying to get everything done, done timely, and reported. So, round up now. That's B and C rolled into one. Uh, if you review these at home, a couple of questions. I would suggest a phone call because email seems to be uh, Frozen. Problem lately. Uh, email has been down since Friday and sporadic since uh, Monday at 2 o'clock. It came back online, but then it's been sporadic since. Working on going to uh, cloud based email services, um, but it does require us having to obtain control of our domain name. We really get two of them buttonfire.org and buttonet.org. They are under the control of either DOS Solutions or Two Cows. Two Cows, I guess, is out of Canada. Okay. Uh, two Cows, yes. I, I couldn't believe it when I read it, too. Um, and the issue is throughput on the servers. Um, they have been maximized in throughput. We've talked about website redesign and email services within this budget with a plan that it would be. Um, Cost covered over a three year payment system for the website design and email. Um, the email is $5 per month per account for an Outlook 365 account and redefining those accounts uh, to something that makes sense for us and doesn't make it simple for someone else to look at the Putney accounts and put them in order on his system. So. Uh, I think that is uh, about to happen because Karen and I, over the last four days, have been frustrated dealing with it. Totally. Uh, totally. And that we actually missed what I would consider a very significant email from an event that happened uh, last Friday morning. Right. Uh, there. An email was sent, and I guess the only one who actually got it was Josh. Uh, but it was sent to all three of you, sent to Karen and I. And we never got it because yeah. our email server rejected it. Right. Yeah. And you don't recover those. They, they simply get Off rejected and sent back, and you never get it. Yeah. So I know someone from school tried emailing you yesterday too. And did work. And it said your mailbox is full, right. or something like that. Yes. So I think that's that's yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yours would be. And that's, yeah. that's what we were learning from our provider of views. Uh -huh. uh, so. That's that's our final excitement for that. Um, 
like I said, if you come up with any questions, I would say call me at this point until we get the email straightened out. Yeah, the, the 19 budget, like I said, the, the spreadsheet you got at the top gives you your calculated tax rate. And the only change in there is we added the $18,293 for the second lease payment on the excavator. It wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, it wasn't budgeted in this fiscal year. And so, therefore, it didn't translate to next fiscal year. So, once discovered, I had, had to add it. Why was it that it just was overlooked? Or? Oh, I think you agreed to buy, um, oh. but it was a question right. of lease versus right. tomorrow. Right. And yeah, that's so. right. So, the, there's a line in there that says excavator trailer that was used in 16. 17 is not used. 18 has the excavator in it. 19 is going to have the excavator in it. <laughs> So I'm just going to relabel that to escalator release. Okay. You know, it would have been lovely to email these out to you. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. And this, the bookkeeper position is 40 hour position no. or 35? No. 15. 15 right now. No. 15 now. Right. And it was budgeted for 15. Yeah. Um, but we went through, geez, and Laura left September 11th or so. So the bookkeeper came in to be the second body um, and, and assist for. 35 to 40 days. Mm. Um, and so that, you know, that, that position has used up probably two extra months worth of hours simply by changing staff. Right. Mm -hmm. I thought there was money in there for the bookkeeper. Yeah, there is. There is for 15 hours a week to 15 bucks an hour. But then when Laura left, she was putting in 35 hours a week. She was putting in more than twice the regular hours because she was coming in every day because that was the second body because Laura wasn't here. Okay. So, yeah. Then Karen came in. Yeah. And she hasn't questioned it yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any others? Anything else on that? No. Into the <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, he, he, something to say there. <laughs> and to uh, okay. to recognize if um, we agree that we would move the bookkeeper position to a 35 hour a week job, with that goes the benefit package. Right. So it's more than just the salary. You know, deal with uh, Gamer's retirement. You got to deal with uh, vision, health, dental. Life and disability to go with that position, yeah. and there is built built in during the budget process is this cushion word in the spreadsheet um, when budgets are put together. But uh, you're looking at by the time you do that, you might be five months or four months of a year to have to worry about that number instead of an entire year. I'm sorry to explain it. Because the fiscal year goes to June 30. Right. You know, oh, I see. months left. Right. Okay. It's already budgeted next year to be a full time position starting July 1st. Right. Okay. Right. Budgeted with benefits in the next budget. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So that's, that's in this presentation. Okay. Good. What's that? Sorry. Saving money. Um, you never say <clears throat> just because you've got a dollar in your pocket. Right? That was the whole thing. Yeah. You want to save money, have the book keeper. The whole thing. You know. I'm sorry. Would you clarify that? In, in lieu of a treasurer position, saving money. Maybe one. what's interpreted. Because I don't know I wasn't part of that. 
Go ahead. All right. Any other questions? Input on the budget process. So we are two weeks. So yeah. we're leaving the tenth and the seventeenth. Yeah. Right. So. Seventeenth. So in theory, our budgets that will be presented for discussion for town meeting can be wrapped up either the tenth or the seventeenth. Seventeenth is the latest. Yeah. And my take on this process is going to be whatever you present, it will be modified. That's how we, yeah, through discussion, um, because there's, again, radical changes going on. Um, and, you know, up front, I can tell you, I budgeted it as if we were appointing someone, and the salary for the clerk's been reduced. Did you not bring in someone in at the same value of someone who's been here 11 years? So there's a presumption going on there. Somebody's got a guess. So I took the guess. So those are the types of lines to look at. And if, Laura, you have an interest in coming in and going over the budget with me, feel free as a, as a oh, citizen of the for punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that sounds delightful. <laughs> BYOB. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, that's. I think that's enough to. Chew on for now. Chew on for now. <laughs> Anything else you want to do to rate your pretty much just reminders of what used to be the old business list? Items are oh, that's all this is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, all that stuff is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The same of more as a reminder. Uh, one of the things that Karen and I discussed was the, the traditional new business, old business. Well, there's very little that's new. <laughs> <laughs> so just having I, so we changed it to just say select board items. Okay. Mm -hmm. These are the things we're going to talk about, whether they're new or they're old. This is what our discussion will be around. And old and new really loses its meaning because oftentimes you bring up something that's new that's really already been talked about. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's a, a change in the way the agenda has been put together. We'll move on to a quick uh, manager's group. report. Yeah, just a couple things to sure. update you on. Um, cold weather has raised a little bit of hell with highway equipment and raised a lot of hell with the fire department equipment. Yeah. They responded to a fire on uh, Monday evening on Mountain View Drive. And um, the property structure, we'll say, but the whole interior is gutted. The individual spoke to both Tom Goddard and called here because he also wanted to try to make tax payments and whatnot. Uh, one member of Highway was out to basically keep as much sand on the ground between the hydrant basket bill and the fire itself. Um, going back and forth chasing uh, tanker trucks. We have equipment that now has uh, within its lines, uh, valves and connections, some leaks. They are repairable, the truck still functions and will service for fires, uh, though it's in need of repair. So we are on the list with many fire departments um, who are suffering the same problems with the cold weather. Um, as well, uh, a shout out to the highway guys who put in enormous hours over the last couple of holiday weekends. Um, and then uh, the fire crews, uh, Tom Goddard and, and all of his staff, for having to respond both in the interstate and in town from many events that are just simply around all this cold weather. Good. And now we have tomorrow to look forward to. Yeah, we have tomorrow to look forward to, yes. And yes. this weekend. Yeah, then this weekend, when, uh, again, it's going to be freezing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is tough on equipment and personnel. And personnel. For sure. Yeah. And we appreciate their continued efforts, as always. Absolutely. Um, all right. Anything else? No. That's it. 
Oh, I ran through All the that? Device. Tell us it was cold? <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Do we have warrants? We do. We have an accounts payable warrant for $53,000. $68.41. I have it as numbered as 16. And payroll 27 for $7,081.15. This is just town staff and does not include library. And so, what is this? I make a motion to approve order order goes order. Is presented. And order goes as presented. So moved. Oh, second. All right, all in favor? Aye. All right, everybody gets paid this week. place at this point or ideas that you're going to present the town with options I or? think we have, you know Chip put together earlier in the year a really good um, report on com uh, comparable costs and mm -hmm. you know, Westminster which has crashed but I mean, yeah. and what that really relates to yeah I remember that right. and I think that is really going to foster the discussion. I mean, it comes down to, you know, there's, there's sort of not, we found that there really wasn't a middle, any kind of middle ground between, you know, getting into the dump business mm -hmm. and continuing a very simple arrangement like we had, mm -hmm. but there were complications raised with that, you know, locating it expenses related to that how do you police it mm -hmm. do you have someone supervising it do you you know going in when in fact the recycling capacity continues to exist nine miles down the road it is more difficult and more, and more complicated but it's there were other pressures that were put on the budget that just mm -hmm. you have i have an idea if um you're interested in hearing it um I, just, I did a little bit of research and I could do more if anybody's interested, but what about a, a gated uh, facility with a card reader and we could sell the cards annually to yeah, Putney Town I mean, residents definitely a and charge more for comparable ideas that we, you know, bandied about, you know, and and, I, it, it would take some time to cost that out and say what, yeah. what this would actually take to do. Um, All right. Is that if I did some research, would you be interested in seeing that? Certainly an option. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, again, this is going to, as as you as you know, at town meeting, this is going to be a topic for discussion. That's a good time to pop up with, mm. you know, okay. facts and figures for sure. I mean, who's going to you know? Well, it remember that it's <laughs> that entering into that kind of commitment's an ongoing one. Yeah. No, well. I understand that. I understand I mean, that it would have to be operated by the town. And, right. Mm -hmm. No. So some are and some aren't. There are communities in the state of Vermont whose transfer stations are owned by the town and completely operated by a solid waste hauler. That's kind of what I envision, except for the gate and the the cards being and operated it, by us. You would think that would be operated by a hauler. All of that. Yeah, they, they actually would operate the whole facility and you are facilitating them having a facility effectively. Mm -hmm. This happens a lot in the more rural towns uh, in the Northeast Kingdom mm -hmm. and across the 105 section you know, at the very top. Specifically? Can we talk? <laughs> Highgate. Not Highgate. Highgate? Okay. Not Highgate. I'll call Highgate. <laughs> uh, right, I mean, you know, just having a, a, a reasonable sense of a yearly cost on that, you know, what it, what it really 
this is yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. Last I knew, Highgate's functionality was such that highway equipment was purchased by the proceeds derived by the operator of the transfer station paying the town, which is a totally different way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. Is that well? That's what I was thinking. If we were operating it, um, selling cards to people in the town and upcharging towns around us, we might actually be able to turn a profit at it. But that's maybe wishful thinking. <laughs> well, I mean, that's where that we're getting into replacing. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the South Waste District. Yeah. Yes. Well. Yeah. <laughs> well. Okay. Right. I mean that. I don't want to bring a school. Do you want to bring a school? This <laughs> The, uh, be sure you review Act 148 okay, thank you. to know what it is that you are trying to yeah. address because there are legal requirements there. Mm -hmm. The town has one and only one real legal requirement, and that's to inform its public. That's it. They don't have to do anything other than say, here is the new law, please follow it. Mm -hmm. But they're not required to start picking up trash, picking up food. They got recyclables. No, I understand. I think in this town, though, there's a really strong desire to have a to recycling have facility. Okay. Um, yes. So. Yes. And there's always going to be that that cost benefit mm -hmm. weight mm -hmm. at some point. And there were individuals here during many discussions mm -hmm. when I first got here who said we should just go to curbside, just like Westminster did, mm -hmm. until I presented that number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that. what happens to the money that we're paying? When them saw a voice, if we did something on our own, uh, you still have a membership. Mm -hmm. More than likely, you'd still be paying that. Absolutely. Right. I think we we still want to be a member because there's still the the big recycling point. Um, of, you know, for construction debris for well, they develop they develop the um, set program that you have to adopt mm -hmm. and annually you got to renew and review the state of Vermont uh, ANR relative to solid waste management and you have to develop that and administratively when they develop that and all the towns basically sign on to it um, as a policy for them to follow. So if you're going to get into the solid waste business 100% independent you will need administration just to do the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And that's not to pick up trash, that's to just communicate with the state government. <laughs> I think that's the direction we want to go. So that's why I say that there is requirements that the town must adopt a, a, a plan for solid waste. And usually the method is that the district creates a plan and you sign on to that plan. All right. Well, I'll, I'll do some research here. Back with tons more questions. <laughs> so. yep. yeah, yeah. yeah, my door's open. Except now it's too cold. Yeah, right. <laughs> Figured. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else we have this evening? That's it. Any any other business? Any, any other business out here? That's All right. Well, we'll make okay. it short then. I don't think we need an executive session. Next the is next meeting is January 10th. 5.30 here to be a special select board meeting because yeah. it's not in the normal schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our regular schedule would have been the, is the 17th. It would be the 17th. Okay. So. I, all right. Uh, Hopefully. That agenda we will have again. Hopefully budget. we all can. <laughs> We're not all frozen in somewhere. And we can make it. All right. Motion, Motion to adjourn. So move. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>